Good day, viewers. Welcome, namaste, namaskaram, and vanakkam. This is the second series of videos targeted at sexual health literacy of Indian community. In this series, we have brought in some very interesting and important topics. Just to mention a few, uh, accessing help from a GP, condom use, contraception, STIs, and sexual behaviors. And I would encourage you to watch all of these uh, videos. And also those who haven't watched uh, series one, we have a link provided in the description to go watch series one. And uh, thank you for your support. Sexual behaviors, what are they? It's a, it's a very important question. And sexual behaviors are the manner in which human beings experience and express our sexuality. Say for example, having sex with one other person or multiple persons or having self uh, sex, often referred to as masturbation. These are all different types of sexual behaviors. So yeah, sexual behaviors is the way we express and experience our sexuality. The question is, are sexual behaviors different to sexual functioning? The simple answer is yes, they are different. Let me explain what a sexual functioning is. Sexual functioning is the way our body and mind reacts to different stages of sexual response. Say for example, how a person gets turned on, how a person gets aroused, how a person reaches the climax and thereafter. So that's the sexual response. And how our body and mind reacts to those different stages is a sexual functioning. Now, sexual behavior, as I said earlier, is the way we experience and express our sexuality. Let me give a tangible example. A man getting an erection, looking at something or thinking of someone, that is sexual function. Whereas what he does with that erection, whether he masturbates or whether he has sex with somebody else, that's a sexual behavior. So sexual function and sexual behaviors are two different things, but very closely associated. Why sexual behaviors are subject to taboos and myths? So that's the question. And the reason for that is, any behavior a human being expresses is subject to judgment in some form of the other. When it comes to sexuality or sexual behaviors, because there's a lot of shame and guilt associated with it, and there's a lot of fear of judgment associated with it, it becomes even more common to have taboos and myths and misconceptions around sexuality. Now, the only way to overturn this, not all at one time, but slowly over a period of time, is by accessing right information, credible information, scientific information about sexuality. And one way of doing that is the fact that you're watching these video series is part of it. But beyond this, starting sex education at school and, and early sex education and having access to right information, seeking information from health professionals and seeking information from credible websites, all these forms part of improving sexual health literacy. So the common sexual behavior related issue that I have encountered for many, many years and continue to ask, get questions is around masturbation. Now, uh, in sex therapy world, we use a slightly different term. We call it sex exercise, just to make it softer, but it all refers to the act of self-pleasure, which is what commonly referred as masturbation. Now that's a very loaded term and there's a lot of misconceptions around masturbation. Now there are two things to it. One is from a health point of view and other is based on cultural values or faith related uh, beliefs. Now from a health point of view, absolutely there is no harm about masturbation, but different cultures and different faith system has different values attached to masturbation. Now, whatever it is, there are three things that are important. The, what the person knows about masturbation, what that person feels while masturbating, 
and the actual act of masturbation. Say for example, if a person thinks masturbation is wrong, and if he knows that masturbating will make him feel guilty, and if he doesn't masturbate, then that's totally fine. The second scenario, if the person thinks masturbation is totally fine, and if he feels good about masturbating, and if he masturbates, then there is no problem. The third scenario is when a person thinks masturbation is absolutely wrong, but then feels good while masturbating, and continues to masturbate, and then feeling guilty once he completed masturbation, now that is a problem because constantly they are having this guilt which over a period of time can have some consequences. The consequences are not from the actual behavior, but the feelings associated with the behavior. The question is, what are some of the tips to know whether a person has a problem with a, sec a specific sexual behavior? It's, uh, it's not simple and straightforward, so there's a lot to explain here. Now, whether a specific sexual behavior is a problem, the first question is, problem to whom? Whether to that person, or the person whom they are living with, or to the larger society? So that's the first level we need to think about it. The second thing is, to understand whether a sexual behavior is problematic or not, you can do a self-assessment, whether the behavior is under your control or whether the behavior is controlling you. Say for example, you like masturbating every day and you do it every day and, and one day you think, am I addicted or am I dependent on this behavior? Let's say you stop it for a week and see whether you can continue to function normally. And if that's the case, then the behavior is under your control. On the other hand, if you stop masturbating one day and you feel restless and you can't function normally, then probably you might want to consider whether you are dependent on that behavior in order to function on a day-to-day -day basis. If that's the case, you can always access professionals' help like a sex therapist who will be able to uh, go through with you and give you some tips to overcome such an issue. So in terms of defining uh, sexual behavior to be problematic, it's important that you seek professionals' help.